Hello everyone. Well, I think this is a Dyson. I think this is a Dyson DC-03. Another gap in the collection. I used to have a Dyson. Well, I've had a couple. I've had one of those clear models. I think it was purple. And then I managed to get my hands on a new in the box DC-03i in silver and white, which was an independent retailer exclusive. Yes, brand new in the box, long before I was on YouTube, and I sold it. Oh, hello, Daisy. Now, I don't know what... No, you, you starred in a recent video, didn't you? You and Molly. No, I'm terribly sorry about this. The perils of owning demanding little dogs. Right. <laughs> People haven't tuned in to see you, Daisy. As pretty as you are, just sit there and don't be naughty, if you can manage it. Right. Okie dokie. Yes, I thought so. I didn't pay a lot for this. I wonder why. Older Dysons have um, a tendency to go green. That's the original colour. It's odd that uh, we've got an example of what the colour should be and what the colour goes. Um, so that's the grey it should be. And here is the green that many Dysons go. So if that's gone green, I expect a lot of the other parts of the clean have gone green. Uh, so there must be two different types of plastic on this uh, in very good condition despite it's gone green. Dyson sort of all-purpose upholstery nozzle. So that's the first thing out of the box. Let's hope it's not damaged. Yes it's as it's green. It is very green. It's a shame it's gone green because it's in very good shape, it really is. Again, we can see an example of the correct gray color and the green, it's gone. The cap is uh, in one piece. The top cord hook is in one piece. It looks in very good shape. Just a shame about the green color. I've taken the hose off. Let's uh, examine the hose for any splits. You can still buy pe uh, spare parts for the DC-03, not from Dyson. They've discontinued spares and support for this model. Used to, not that long ago, used to be able to get things direct from Dyson. But no, that hose looks in good shape as well. I think this, I think I offered 25 pounds for this, something like that, it wasn't a lot. Right, we do have, in the correct grey, a crevice stool. Now, I think this is missing the dusting brush, but I can still get a genuine grey Dyson dusting brush, so that's fine. I think that's everything out of the box. I'll keep that box because it'll be handy. When I sell an upright vacuum cleaner, hopefully fairly soon, I'll start to sell some, and uh, I'll use that box. Right, let's just get rid of all this packaging out the way. And we can have a look at this Dyson DC-03. Now let's have a quick, a quick shifty before I have a closer look. It looks like it survived. It survived being transported, but it's not survived the ravages of time. The fact that it's gone green. We all know about white coloured vacuums going yellow, but grey Dysons go green for some reason, I don't know why. But anyway, what I'll do with this one before giving it a, a quick wipe over, I'll just attach the hose, which fits down the back here, and the handle. Give it a wipe, and we'll have a closer look at this very light Dyson DC-03 bagless upright vacuum. Well, folks, a few minutes later, well, possibly 15 minutes later, I present to you the Dyson DC-03. And I would have been very happy with this cleaner, but of course, <laughs> it has suffered quite, not catastrophic, because you can still get bits for this, but it has had some damage. It's possibly fixable. I'll show you it in a minute. If this hadn't uh, gone green, it would have been in very, very good condition 
for one of these. They tend to be battered about. Now what I've done, I did wipe it over briefly with a wet wipe. But one tip, I keep getting asked this, and I keep saying what I use, but I'll tell you again. Where is it? <laughs> I had it to hand. <laughs> oh, crikey. I was going to show you what I use just now. Oh, it's over there. Just excuse me, folks. Now, to give this cleaner a brief initial clean, and look at it, you can see the shine. The bumper was dirty. This just took 15 minutes. Of course, it wasn't filthy, and I wouldn't do this if it was absolutely filthy. I did wipe it down first. If you've got a very dirty vacuum, then obviously the best thing to do is take it apart as much, of you, as, much as you can and clean every part individually in a bath but put down an old towel at the bottom of the bath uh, to stop it from scratching. That's what I've done with larger parts on a vacuum. But what I do for an initial clean or a vacuum that isn't dirty, tea cut. That's what I initially use, which gets off paint marks, um, it gets off grime. Don't use it over lettering because it'll take the lettering off a lot of cleaners. If you just rub it over the lettering, you've lost the lettering. You might want to do that. If, if the lettering's half worn away, you might think it'll look better without, without any lettering, so you can use T-cut. Um, I find it doesn't damage the surface, but try a little area. If you're not sure, test it on an unconspicuous area first. You just rub it in with one cloth, and then let it dry, and then buff it with a clean cloth. Absolutely fine. And if you want to give a, a final polish, most car polishes, Auto Glim, that Vuplex I use just to give a quick polish and an anti-static coating. But you know, it's not rocket science. You can use mainly things that you'd use on a car. You can use on most vacuums. But again, test a small area if you're not so sure. So that's all I've done with this, giving it a wipe with some wet wipes and a bit of tea cut. So let's start at the bottom. I'll turn the machine over and show you the brush roll. So here's the underside of the cleaner, again in very good shape really. I don't think I need to replace this base plate. That is available to buy new or used. I've seen it on eBay, but that, there's no point in replacing that. The brush roll, I'm not sure if that's how it should be. It is obviously original. Now that moves very easily, but this is a clutched model. So I'm assuming it's in the hard floor setting at the moment which means it's not engaging with the motor spindle. If I have to buy a new belt I'll, or belts, I'll have to buy a new belt or belts. I'm not sure if this is uses, uses two or one belt. It's an odd shaped brush roll, isn't it, on these? Sort of a helix design. Quite a narrow opening. This is only a 700 watt motor. It's pretty low wattage for its time. Dyson never went to very high wattage vacuums, but this was when this was in the shops at 700 watts, this was, I think, the lowest wattage Dyson cleaner, not including, of course, the cordless machines. So here's the base, it moves to keep it flat to the surface, and you can remove this plate here using a coin or a screwdriver and remove these three screw heads, just turn them to the unlocked position and this comes off. While we're in this vicinity, we'll have a look at the rating sticker. Okay, so this is Dyson serial number 830IE010057, 230 240V, 600W NOM, 700 watt max model DCO3. And uh, it's got Dyson Appliances Limited, Malmesbury SN16Q, or no, ORP, England, UK. I'm not sure if this is made in the UK, some were made in Malaysia. This may be a UK model. If any of you Dyson enthusiasts want to tell me, please comment below if this is a UK machine. Here's the cleaner head, and you can again see the original grey colour here, as opposed to the faded green that this DCO3 has gone. But in the middle of the cleaner head, you can see a clear window. You can take that window out by turning this screw which gives you a little of access inside if there's a blockage. This is the clutch control on this Dyson DC-03, and you've got three positions. You've got neutral, which is the brush bar off, 
for delicate rugs and floors so basically you can use it in the operating position but you'll just get the suction and the brush bar will remain static park now that's when the machine is in the upright position when you're using the cleaning tools for example so you'll, again you'll get the suction but the brush roll won't rotate it's to prevent damage to your carpet in case it's staying in one spot all the time it just cuts off the brush roll and of course you've got drive which is the front position which is obviously the brush bar on for normal cleaning you can see here in this clear part two filters this top one is the pre filter and this one is the lifetime HEPA post filter but they're all situated in this same part here now if I can remember how to get this off oh that's it you just turn that you can buy these they tend to be quite expensive for genuine ones and certainly a lot more than this cleaner cost me let's try and get that out and have a look at it it doesn't want to come out hang on well I've opened that enough should just slide out It's not at the moment. I'll just have to consult an online instruction book. But anyway, looking at it, I mean, looking at both of them, I don't know if these have been replaced or this cleaner's not had much use, but I can see that the pleated parts of these filters looks absolutely white. There's no evidence of a lot of use. So I say they could be replacements. I'll just close that again, just to hold the filter in place I think that's it and of course on the top here we've got space for the three cleaning tools obviously missing the dusting tool but uh, obviously this is where the upholstery nozzle sits and your crevice tool now some models I think it was later models rather than earlier models but some models of the DCO3 didn't have this handle here. This is something that often would break off. Um, so I'm not sure if it's the earlier ones. Anyway, Dyson <laughs> experts, I think this is earlier. I'm pretty sure the later ones. I've certainly seen um, DCO3s without this handle and I don't think it's because the handle's broken. It's because for some reason Dyson did away with it. But it looks more symmetrical somehow with both handles. You've got the handle here above the bin and this handle so you can really you can lift it up from that handle I believe if you want to here's the dirt bin I've given it a bit of a clean in some hot soapy water before showing it to you to remove the bin for emptying there's a yellow button here so you simply just press that and then the whole bin assembly comes away from the machine and then there's a button here on the side which you press to remove the top part and then just empty the dust that uh, middle separator part there that comes out and I did have this out for a clean just pulls out and you can clean this if you want to but it's in pretty good shape that bin it's not too cloudy which again suggests to me that it's had little use now you can again use tea cut on clear parts like this don't rub too vigorously over the max line here because that may come off but certainly on the inside of the bin, plenty of tea cut, give it a good rub, wait until it's dried and then polish it off and you will find that uh, that improves the clearness of the bin. You can then apply a final sort of wax polish if you want to. Um, I will be doing that, but that is in very good shape, isn't it really, for one of these. They're normally a lot more battered than this. And here we've got the top part of the cyclone. There is a suction relief valve just on the top there that yellow thing so if you get a blockage um, or you leave it to get too full that will activate to keep the airflow running through the machine lots of writing on these cleaners all these stickers are in one piece the world's first vacuum cleaner with 100% suction 100% of the time I'm going to see what suction this has actually at the hose end with my suction meter shortly so again this could be taken apart a bit more I expect to give it more thorough clean but there you go that's the shroud so it just fits in 
can't remember which way, I think it just pushes in, yes. And then it goes back onto the cleaner. You can see here again the original colour that this DC-03 would have been. We can just locate, let's move that round, locate the bin back, click it into position. And I'll just show you the top and I'll show you the damage. And those wheels are going to need a little bit of an oiling. On off switch, single motor, not no dual speed motor, no uh, twin motor should I say, obviously it's a clutched model. And you've got the button here to release your handle to convert it for cleaning tool use. But this is where it's broken I'm afraid, on one of the major parts of the cleaner. Can you see here, I've got the part, might be able to glue that. It is a clean single brake, look, that's possibly fixable. I'll be able to use something on the opposite side of that. I should be able to make quite a good fix. It's happened on the other side as well. It hasn't quite come off. If I can just show you. Oh, it's all, oh, it's all very amateur. There we go, you can see what I'm doing now. There, so it's still slightly attached, so if I'm careful, I should be able to fix that. You can see this, this is where the cord enters the cleaner. Nice matching yellow strain relief for the cord. We've got the original cable by the looks of it, which is nice to see in perfect condition. We've also got the little cable securing clip as well. And a very nice original Dyson branded round plug. I do like these plugs. That was a little bit grubby when I first saw it but again a bit of tea cut and a polish up it looks like new it's fitted i think with a 13 amp fuse so i think that's uh, all i can show you of the cleaner itself so i'm going to plug it in and switch it on the condition of this suggests to me that the motor should sound okay but you never know we could have a screamer on our hands or an explosion we're going to find out in just a few seconds from now Okay, she's plugged in and ready to switch on at the wall. I'm not sure if it's going to turn on because I don't know if it was in the on position on the switch. Here goes. Right, it's not working folks. Hopefully it wasn't working because it wasn't in the on position. Now, <laughs> fingers crossed, it should work. Well, that sounds, as far as I can remember, okay. Yep. Right, I'll give it a push. I wonder if it's going to cope with this plush carpet, though. Right. Here goes. Well, it's easy enough to push on this carpet, but then the brush roll is fairly wimpy on this, and I don't think the suction's that great, but uh, we'll test the suction in a minute using my suction gauge. I'm pretty sure that the brush roll was rotating. Couldn't really hear much going on though, but we'll just uh, switch it on and have a look. Yes, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I don't think it needs a new belt. The dirt you can see inside the bin was actually dirt that was originally in the bin. So it's picked it, it's picked its own dirt back up again. Well, I'm fairly pleased, apart from the bit of damage and the green. If this arrived 
not green and with no damage this would have been a pretty fine example of one of these I mean they're not uncommon they're not as common as say a DC 14 DC 07 you see hundreds of them refurbished on eBay but there's still a fair few of these if you don't want to spend any time or money refurbishing your own there are sellers that sell these refurbished but when I saw this I think it was 25 pounds I thought it looked in fairly good shape I knew it looked a bit yellow um, I thought well if it needs anything I'll do it myself and save the money so I'm just going to release the hose by pulling it up I'm going to take it out actually I believe you can add the cleaning tools yes you can cleaning tools will go directly onto the end of the hose which is the way I prefer to use them it's easier for stairs and if you're cleaning your car but of course you can now does this work this way around so confusing with some Dysons I don't think it does no this one it's always struck me as being a bit odd that you have to attach the tools to the handle like that so it's sort of upside down it just so you hold it this way and you put whatever tool you want on the end I think you could get uh, like a floor tool maybe some models came with it there were several different versions of DC03 this is the really really bog standard one um, but yeah it just, just seems odd that you put the <laughs> the tool on that side whoops heard a cracking noise mm, no it's okay oh, you've got to be so careful with these older cleaners sometimes the plastics on them with age become very brittle I'll take off the wand and use the hose end and reach into my drawer for my suction gauge I know these were not very uh, powerful as far as I remember it's a shame I like this design of Dyson it was a lot slimmer and lighter than the other machines that were available at the time and really this type of design I think would make a very good cordless upright I know Dyson seem to be mad keen on just keeping the stick type of cordless machine but why don't they produce a larger machine that's cordless and I think this type of machine this shape or something more updated would be ideal it's nice and slim it does go under, under furniture better than most of the Dysons because of the much slimmer um, design of it I mean I like it I like the design of this it's one of my favorites I think if you were to ask me and some people have what's my favorite Dyson I probably would still say the DC 13 the original not 13 <laughs> 15 the original ball um, I know it looked over engineered and complicated but I just liked it I liked using it I've still got one obviously uh, a ball animal you can see that on my channel okay I mean even after a bit of a cleanup I don't think this the result we're going to get will be much improved because I said those filters do look very very clean I'm gonna say under 40 on the gauge that's my guess okay that was about 24 which is pretty poor but the suction relief valve I noticed was kicking in so obviously it's not going to be a very accurate measurement so what I'm going to do just to try and get a little bit more accurate measurement of the machine as it would normally be used I'm just going to block off this little grill here at the top this is where the suction escapes when there's a restriction to the airflow obviously when I put the suction gauge on it restricts the airflow and some of the cleaners that I've tested they don't have suction relief valves and they give you a much higher result but this one it was losing a lot of suction so I'll carefully put something over that trying not to damage the stickers on the top of the uh, cyclone here and see if we can improve on that result so yes almost double the suction it went up to almost 40 on the gauge so it's obvious that the 
little relief valve. It's doing its job. It's obviously it's doing what it's designed to do to keep the air flowing. I'll just carefully take the tape off. There we go. Right then. Well, I'll pop a bit of dirt down. Why not? You know, some dirty dirt, I think. It's time for some dirty dirt on my new carpet. Who cares? I've got plenty of carpet shampoos and dry cleaning systems I can remove any muck with. Let's pop the... Uh, I'm not sure if that damage on the top here affects this too much. I think it's still... Yeah, it's cosmetic. It doesn't affect the handle staying in place that part broken and the other part cracked so yeah it's not too bad right then folks let's pop down some dirty dirt Well, we can just about see where the cleaner's been, but <laughs> it's left an awful lot, hasn't it? That was just two passes. Didn't really touch the clumps of dog hair, and then I didn't really expect it to. I mean, it's it's got some dirt out, but ooh, I think that's going to need multiple passes before that looks clean. But as I said, a lot of that will be in the base of the pile now. Right, I'll try again. Well, the max fill line police won't be very happy with this video because look, I've exceeded the max fill line by, well, a couple of inches at least. Naughty boy. I should be punished. But it's a, a rather fetching effect, isn't it? <laughs> so, yes, going over a few times, it did pick up most. I mean, there's a few bits I haven't managed to get, but... I can guarantee that there will be dirt left in that carpet. Not the best Dyson this, um, but it's one I like for the design of it. I like the fact that it's slim and light, goes a lot flatter to the floor than other Dysons of that era. So it's nice to have, it needs a little bit of work, but not a lot. The motor sounds, I think how it should, quite noisy, but it doesn't sound uh, too bad. But there, there you go, uh, another gap in the old collection filled with the Dyson DC-03. If you have any comments or questions about this Dyson, please comment below. And I'll see you all very soon for the next video. Don't forget to subscribe, click the bell icon, thumb up, thumb down. And follow me on Instagram and Twitter if you so wish. So that really is it. <laughs> I'll see you all very soon. I can see in the background another vacuum awaiting an unboxing. So I'll better get on with that. So until the next time, I'll see you all very soon. Bye for now.